Hey y'all, it's Crafty Hope here and welcome as I continue my assemblage art project that is the 100 day project that I'm doing. It's um, hashtag assemblage 100. So this one I actually completed a couple weeks ago. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen it, but I took this little case of some kind that I found at the thrift store and um, decided to add some spools into it. So the first thing I did was alter my spools. I used some, that's a like, what is it called? It's an antiquing wax. This one's folk art, but I know you can find ones at other stores. I'll put a link to this one below. But basically you brush on this wax like this and it kind of stains wood and then you wipe it off. Um, so I did that with all of the buttons, it's buttons, with all of the spools. It's 12 of them for all the cases. And then for the case itself, I just used some matte spray paint and covered the whole thing with the spray paint. I tried to use a black gesso, but it got real fiddly and I decided it was just going to be easier to use the black spray paint. So now I'm going in and I'm wrapping each of these spools with something. So this first one, I've just got some oh what is that it's some recycled sari silk that I've wrapped around it and then I've got some rusty safety pins so I'm going to take one of those um, I'm trying to find one that'll fit just dumped them out big made a big mess on my desk but found one that would work and I'm going to pin that in place and so over several days time, I worked on one or two of these spools at a time because I was trying to just do a little bit of art every day as part of my 100 day project. I know I don't have to have a completed something every day. So this was, you know, one of the days. So the next day I took another one of those spools and I've got some chain. This is some trash chain that I wasn't going to use for anything else, but was in my stash for things like this. So I'm wrapping it around the, um, the spool and it's got a clasp on it. So I'm just going to make sure that it clasps together. Again, this was just an old necklace or something. And I've got a tiny, uh, it's a heart charm with a jump ring. So I've brought in my jewelry pliers. I'm going to twist open that jump ring if I can find it. Usually I have a better light when I'm working on the jewelry stuff. And I'm just attaching that to the clasp. And that's it. So I wanted to bring in a bunch of different materials that I could wrap around these spools. Some of them natural, some of them odd, uh, just anything that I could wrap around it. So here's some embroidery floss. And with this, I kind of established a color theme for this whole spool box. So you saw I had the kind of teal greeny color with the recycled sari silk. And then with this embroidery floss, I've got like a light... Um, purple, like a violety lilac, I don't know, whatever you want to call that color. And that kind of established a color palette for me. So everything else is going to be kind of neutrals. And then I'm going to bring in bits of that, those two colors in as well throughout this spool. I'm calling it a spool case because it's kind of a curio case with little spools. I think this was probably some kind of case for... I think it's a little too small for shot glasses, maybe thimbles or something. I don't know what it was original intention was, but I, um, it works great this way. So you can see, I got a little fiddly with that embroidery floss. I am trying to thread on a button. So this is just a mother of pearl button from my stash. I love me some buttons. So I had to bring that in. And I am just, each end of that embroidery floss, I'm threading through the back of that button. And as you see, I'm adding a little bit of glue. I was having trouble. I'm adding a little glue to the end to make it stiff so I can thread it through. And then I'm just going to tie a double knot. And that is going to stick that on there. Now, if y'all can tell, so far I haven't used any kind of adhesive in this, but that's about to change. A few of these just didn't need adhesives because, because of the way they wrapped, they worked perfectly. And, you know, I used a clasp, I used a, a, a safety pin, and here I'm just tying this button on. So I'm going to trim that kind of close. I'm leaving the ends kind of frayed to give it a little additional texture there. So that one's going to fit right in there. So... And like I said, I did this over time. Now here is some, uh, what is that? 
this is like leather cord. So I decided, and this one took me a while. I was trying to make sure that whatever little accent I added to the, whatever I wrapped around kind of went with whatever it was that, um, I was, yeah, whatever accent I had on there went with whatever I was wrapping around. So it took me a little while to decide what would go with the leather. And I finally hit on the idea of leather belt and decided that what I needed was a little buckle. And I found this, what looks like a tiny buckle. I think it's some kind of stud earring that I upcycled. You know, that I took apart and just had in my stash with, I got a little collection of buckles and it happened to be in there. So it was perfect. And it's in that, that greeny teal color. Absolutely perfect for this. And so I, as you saw, wrapped a little bit of that leather cord around, added the buckle and um, I had to go get my, either go get my E6000 because I realized, oh, this isn't going to just adhere by itself like the rest of them did. So I grabbed my little mini E6000. Y'all, I love these mini tubes. Um, added just a dab of that on there and that one is done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, I decided I really needed a zipper for some reason on one of these. And I used to have a huge collection of zippers, but I did not, I could not find one anywhere. I've since picked up some at the thrift store. So I went and I have a couple pairs of jeans that I plan on upcycling because, you know, I've worn them through. So I just cut out the, the zipper from a pair of jeans that were mine that I had already started to tear apart. And it was really kind of perfect for wrapping around here. And I left for the little extra accent, the zipper pull. And again, I used my E6000 to get that on there. The next one, okay, here's where I start bringing in some of the natural elements. I do love me nature, and I knew that I had to have a little bit of nature in here. So I went out in the yard, and I found some dried vine. Now, I kind of wish it wasn't so dry because it gets, you see, I'm trying to wrap this, and it it just breaks to pieces. It does not want to wrap, so... It's going to take me a little while, and then I realized that if I use the natural curve of these vines, it goes around the spool a little bit better. So I'm doing everything I can not to break this. And I've come to realize with all of the natural elements that I'm adding into my assemblage, none of them are going to last. These are all very organic elements. I'm not sealing them in anything. So over time, all of this stuff is going to break down. But everything breaks down over time we do cloth does everything kind of with time and age is going to fall apart so it's kind of okay for me if these natural elements are not gonna stand the test of time overall and we'll get to that I've got a whole assemblage I just finished it'll be a few weeks before I get it here on YouTube but um it's completely natural and I know all of that stuff's just gonna fall to pieces one day all right so you see I am absolutely struggling with this but I knew I could get it to work so I am using my scissors to cut some of the the pieces that are popping up off I will bring in some of my e6000 here in a minute but I think I'm gonna add my um natural element or my you know my little accent to this because it was staying pretty good and I thought I was going to bring in one of these little hydrangea leaves but I realized it was so big it hid all of that vine that I just wrapped on there and put so much time and effort into so instead I've got this little helicopter seed pod probably from my Japanese maple tree that I'm going to just add the tiniest little bit of glue to and stick that on. Now I do go in and add a little more of the E6000 to some of the vine just to keep it up against the, the spool. So you can see here where I'm having a little bit of issue. So I'm going to add E6000 there and just, yeah, get that onto the spool so it's not overwhelming anything so and I do fiddle with this yeah quite a bit more trying to get everything just the way I want it because it, nature does what it wants to do so I got that just the way I wanted and in there and then the next thing I'm going to do is something very 
um, unorganic and it's some wire. This is copper colored wire. It's not actual copper wire. But I started by one the end of it just kind of making a bit of a loop there so there would be more surface area to start it. And so, and I'm just wrapping this around the spool. I'm wrapping it off one spool onto another. And I know I'm not going to cover every inch of that spool. I just wanted the copper to kind of be there. And my accent for this is going to be a little, it's a flower that I made from solder. Basically, I dripped solder, which is a silver, like, wire that you use for soldering, dripped it into a mold and made a little flower. And so when I think of copper, I think um, of soldering because you can solder copper wire. So that's why I'm using that. So here I finally wrapped all of that on there. I'm doing another little twist at the end. Um, and that actually I think did stay. I might add some glue to it. I'm not sure. But I do put glue on that little soldered flower. Which I think worked out because that I didn't use the flower above um, above it uh, where I put that seed pod. So that worked out. So I have a flower, but it's inorganic. This next one is all about the lace. So I've got this seam binding lace in a violet color. So still sticking with that color theme I've got going. And I'm going to start it off with the E6000 just to have somewhere to start it. And I'm going to wrap that until... It overlaps enough. I have tons of this stuff, y'all. I don't know how I keep collecting this lace seam binding. Apparently, it was very popular at one point, but nobody used all of what they had. I don't even know what it's used for. I just know I have tons of it, and so I try to incorporate it into projects like this. So I've wrapped that around. I tried to make sure that it went around to where I had started it, so now that that glue would be showing... And E6000 was a bit of overkill for that. I could have just used some tacky glue or even school glue would probably have worked with this. So with this other piece of accent lace that's got these tiny flowers on it. So I'm just cutting off one of the flowers. So here we've got another flower here. Um, and I'm going to again stick that down with some E6000. Bring in that back in again. Like I said, I could have used something much more... Um, less harsh I suppose. So that one's all done and I'm going to do another organic one here. So I've got that is moss. That's Spanish moss that grows on everything down here in the south. So and I am using some Aliens Tacky glue for that and this gets to be a little fiddly because Spanish moss doesn't like come in a straight line. So I just kind of wrap it and stick it and wrap it and stick it <laughs> and I'm going to trim it with scissors. Yeah, and play with this. I think I'm going to put some more glue here in just a second. I know that that Aliens will dry clear. My concern with the E6000 and not letting it show is it does have a super shininess to it when it dries, where I don't think the Aliens does, if I'm remembering correctly. And I try to do as best I can when I'm gluing things like this to make sure that the glue doesn't show in any case, even though most of it dries clear. Alright, so for my accent element, I've got an acorn cap here that I am going to use the E6000 on. Now, it is super fiddly because you've got to get the glue on the surface that's going to be touching. And, you know, the edge of an acorn cap is just minuscule. So, that, you know. But it goes on. And I'm going to stick it And I like this assemblage because the acorn cap goes well with the Spanish moss because the Spanish moss often hangs in the oak trees around here. And acorns come from oak trees. Now this one took the least amount of time. Y'all, that is just a zip tie that I am wrapping around that spool, pulling it up and trimming it. And that's it. Um, I think I had short time that day and needed something super quick and fast. And that took all of like 43 seconds. Now I'm going to do these last two, I think, in the same day. I decided to bring in more of my jewelry making stuff again. So I've got some satin cord in black. And I am wrapping that around my spool. And I want to add a bead. And I'm going to add a little teal -y green bead to it. But that cord won't go through the bead. 
So once I get that satin cord wrapped around, I'm just going to tie it. Um, and this will be the back of it so that you won't see it. So I'll trim it fairly close now that I've tied it. And then I've got some black wax linen cord that will fit through my little green bead. And you see it's, it goes with the greens I've got already on there. And so I'm just going to thread that bead onto a little length of the wax linen cord and wrap that around a couple times and then again tie that in the back. And that one done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm sorry, that's the second time I've said that, <laughs> but some of these really were just super quick things. There were a few of them I had to think on a little bit, but that one was super easy. Now, this last thing, last thing I've got is this twine, just some rough uh, natural twine, and I am going to glue one end of it. And what I've got to accent this, y'all, I was thinking when I thought of twine, I thought of a clothesline. And so I found that I had some tiny clothespins and I had it in the violet color. So that was perfect. So it ends, I have three green items in my assemblage and three of the violet items in it. But I'm sticking all of this down with the E6000. And I'm showing you there that that violet color is coming through again. So it's all natural colors and violets. I think, you know, the blue jeans has that little sh tiny bit of blue to it, but it's not, um, I don't know, to me, blue jeans are just a neutral color because <laughs> I wear with everything. All right. So to finish this off, I knew I didn't want those on that black background. I wanted to have something they could pop off of and... So I'm going to cut some dictionary paper, but first I had to measure each of these little, little holes. And so I've written that down and I'm going to use my square ruler and a bit of some heavy cardstock to make a little template that I can trace around on my, the paper that I'm going to use. So I'm trying to flip it over one side of this square. This is just from the Dollar Tree, but that square ruler thing. Um, one side has, I think, centimeters and millimeters, and the other side has inches, and I needed the inches side. So I'm going to mark those off on the edges and then bring my other ruler back in to get the straight edges. And I'm just showing y'all that, I'm, you know, I, w I really did put a little thought into this. <laughs> so, but I want you to see how, you know, you can come up with solutions, you know, for little things like this, that it's, it's, don't overthink it. it. It can be pretty easy to just measure something out. And especially when there's something that's as consistent as, as this. It did get a little fiddly because that table I'm using is not uh, level, I guess. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut out this little corner of this cardstock and then pull out my dictionary. Now, each of the dictionary words has something to do with the thing that's in it, like the zipper, I used zipper and the silk. I think that's actually the one I've got here. I find the word silk and I'm going to cut that out. So I'm trying to think what they all were. Like I think the copper one, I had copper, but I may have used wire. So, and then like lace for the lace one and moss, I think. And, you know, just things that related and nobody will ever notice it, but it just made me feel better that they each had something that related to them. So I'm going to go through, I use two different dictionaries for this, uh, just to give a little interest. And I think because some of the words kind of overlapped a little bit, or I had torn out a page from one of them and didn't have that word that I wanted. And before I stick them in there, I'm going to darken all the edges with some Stazon ink. And I'm using Stazon because uh, I didn't want the ink to blur in any way with any of the substances I used to glue it down. Because I did try to use Mod Podge at first, and I know that will often smear like some of the Distress products and things like that. So I wanted a permanent ink for this. So I'm going to go through all 12 of these little pages. And then you can kind of see in that top one, I had tried to glue one of them down with Mod Podge, but the back of that box was very absorbent and the glue just was not going in. So I am putting in some black gesso into each of these to kind of seal it up a little. 
and you can see I'm just kind of messily doing that and then I'm going to use my matte gel medium to actually stick those in because I thought that was going to be a little more sturdy than just the Mod Podge so and again I'm trying to get those in as best I can without tearing them since I'd already put so much work into cutting them out and darkening the edges and I'm just going to go through and do that in all 12 of these a little bit of matte gel and stick them in I let that dry and then now it's time to just use a little E6000 and glue these down in the direction that I want. I did not push them all the way to the very back of each of the little shelves. I wanted them kind of toward the front. And since some of them had some of the natural elements and stuff that were kind of bulky, I didn't want to break all that stuff off either. And really, y'all, this is it. I put these all in here and let it sitting up like that to let gravity hold it in. I tried to center them, get everything just the way I wanted, and yeah, and that's it. So I'm going to give you some pictures of this at the end. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask below. I appreciate you coming by and watching. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, y'all. Bye! Bye!